says that, you know, we have to be born again, a born in spirit. We have a natural birth. That's right. A flesh birth. But we have to have a spiritual birth. And God wants us to be spiritual. Uh, the Bible says that God is, he wants those who are looking for those that will worship him in spirit and in truth. Yes. Uh, so, so uh, yes, he wants to, he wants to, he promises us this, this life, this salvation, and, and uh, secure in the perfect will of God, but we first uh, um, have to be rendered spiritual. And having Holy Spirit indwelling is the first step. Yes. Hallelujah. Uh, having Holy Spirit indwelling is the first step. And um, if you've not heard of that, I hope that by the end of this message you understand. But this is a big issue for many of today's local assemblies, even those that have knowledge of spiritual indwelling. Uh, uh, sometimes a church finds solace in large numbers of attendance without stressing the urgency of being filled with the Spirit. Exactly. But we, or you, uh -huh. you want the ultimate gift. That's right. Yeah. You want the ultimate gift. Uh, when it comes to spiritual things, I'm not satisfied with second or third place. That's right. Come on. That's right. That's right. Come on. I'm not. You know, uh, uh, yeah, you get a medal or a trophy, but it's not the ultimate prize. That's right. better. You know, if I win the Olympics and I got a silver medal or a bronze medal, I, you know, I, I'd probably put it on display. I, look, I came in second. I, I got a bronze medal, but in Christ, I don't want that. I want the ultimate, the ultimate prayer. And what makes what we're talking about today the ultimate uh, um, prize is that uh, we're talking about not just uh, going to heaven. We're not talking about just going to heaven, but but enjoying salvation now in this life. That's right. And you should be. There should be something that we're living. And we'll talk about that, uh, what God gives us. But if you will, turn with me to Romans chapter 8, verses 1 through 4. Romans 8, 1 through 4. This is a passage that most of you are familiar with. Um, it says, There is now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, uh, uh, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Now, now, he says there's no condemnation. No, in other words, you're not going to be condemned. There's, there's nothing wrong with you. There's nothing that, that's taking you to uh, uh, the wrong way. Or nothing that's taking you to something less than eternal life with Christ. If, in fact, you walk after the uh, uh, spirit and not the flesh. Yes. Now, in the original text, that piece uh, is not in there. Where they get that from is if you continue to read down it does say that, which is the original text, but they're making that reference that that's what we're talking about, that there's the condition of walking after the spirit, not the flesh. And then he says, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. There's a law in Christ Jesus that makes you free from a law that God already declared. <laughs> law of sin and death is the soul that sinned and shall die. As the Bible says, God said that. The soul that sent it shall die. But, but now that we're in a time of grace and, and God's mercy, he says that there's a life, the law now, 
of the spirit of life in Christ. And it'll make you free from the law of sin and death. Yeah. And you want to be free from that because you have sinned. Right. Yeah. Everybody's sinned. Right. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So that everybody deserves to die. Mm -hmm. And according to God's law, the law of sin and death, you will die. That's right. But this can make you free from that. That's right. He said. Uh, uh, um, uh, for, for what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh. Now, you have to understand that the, the law couldn't do something. The law couldn't save you. The law could not make you righteous. And the reason why it couldn't is because of the flesh. It was weak through the flesh. In other words, the, the fault with the law is flesh had to keep it. That's right. Come on. And because flesh couldn't keep it, it rendered the law useless. That's right. That's right. For salvation. Because it could not. It was weak through the flesh. So God sent his son. Christ came uh, uh, in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin and condemned sin in the flesh because he didn't sin. That's right. right. Now, here's the good point. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. That's right. It is in the original text here. This passage. Yeah, no, who right. walk not after the flesh, right. but after the spirit. <laughs> so so he, he's saying this. That this is the part that I want you to get. This is the part that God's trying to get to you. That uh, uh, what God is trying to do when he brings you to the level of you're, gonna, you're getting the ultimate gift is now the righteousness of the law is being fulfilled in you. Come on. Amen. What the law couldn't do because of flesh... Because of flesh. now you you come to a point where you overshot all of those things uh -huh. that would be of natural man, that would be the, the problems with the natural flesh. You now, the, the Bible says that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. That's right. In other words, we could have this thing. Now you have to understand the Bible tells you in Romans seven and twelve. If you if you if you if you, if you, if you might remember that you don't have to turn now. I'll tell you it says wherefore the law is holy and the commandment holy and just and good. Yeah. In other words, there's nothing wrong with the law. It is holy. Yeah. God gave it. If you can live according to this law, you would be holy That's and you would right. be righteous. But you can't. Back come on, on, come on, come on. But being conformed to the law, you can, God is showing you how you can be conformed to the law or be obedient to the requirements of the law and no longer under the influence of your flesh with its corrupt desires. That, that's what he's doing to you. That's, that's a beautiful thing. God, he's giving you the ultimate gift. He's doing something with you that you can't do with yourself. There's no way you can come up with this. And now I'm gonna put you in a situation where the righteousness of the law, the righteousness of the law is being fulfilled in you. That perfect thing that I wanted, that I said, if you want to be right with God, I gave it to Moses and Israel. If you want to be like you know, right, you want to understand what God wants, here it is. Yes, sir. Over six hundred of them. You live like this, then you're right. <laughs> I know you can't, so when you fall, you need a ram, a turtle dove, a wave offering, a real offering. You got a whole lot of stuff to make up for this mess you yes. But I'm going to send myself, I'm going to come myself as a son. And I'm going to die for you, and I'm going to wipe out this. I'm going to bring a new law that will be able to have you in a situation where the righteousness of that law that I gave can be fulfilled in you. You ain't no better than them, but I, we're going to fix you up. You're just like Moses in Israel. You're still in sinful flesh, but we're going to overcome all of that. I told you he wanted to render your, render your spirit. Yes. Praise the Lord. Look, look, here's another one. Here's another one that should excite you. Galatians 5 and 22 through 24. Galatians 5, 22 through 24. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Are you there? Yeah. Is it, but, of the fruit of the, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. That's right. 
And, this is a good part, they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. Amen. Amen. If you're Christ possessing, if you belong to him, That's right. then you have crucified the flesh yeah, with the affections and lusts. Right. That's hard. Jesus. That's hard. Yeah, that's hard. Because your flesh is crying out to do some things. Your flesh has affections and lusts. Hmm. See, see uh, uh, what, what the Bible is telling you, that the true Christian, uh, 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 for the true Christians, the corrupt passions of the soul have been put to death. That's right. Yeah. They've been put to death. That is destroyed. Yeah. They, it, it, it's just as though they are dead and have no power over us. You, you understand? Like if you, when you, when you, you know, like uh, Pastor Derek just said, you know, he just found his mother is always your mother. <laughs> Uh, he he, forty eight years old. I don't know you, brother. I'm sorry. He's only thirty six. But but his mother is still his mother. He said, and she executed power over him just by looking at it. That's right. You better sing. But when Sister Lynette goes on to meet the Lord, she ain't had no more power over him. That's right. She did. She's got, she has no more power over me. The Bible says this, that if you're in Christ, if you're really Christ, then your flesh has been crucified. It's dead. It has no power over you. That's right. That's a problem for you if your flesh still has power over you. If your flesh can drive you to do things, if your flesh can make you do things that you don't want to do. See, that, that means you haven't really done but, but the Bible says if you're Christ, if you belong to Christ, yes. now, if you're his, then you have killed that. You've done away with that. And we know what it means to crucify. Crucify means to impale on the cross like they did Jesus. But more, more, more distinctly for this, for, for you and your life right now, it also means to extinguish, to subdue yeah. a passion or selfishness. Yeah. So you you got to extinguish. Come on. Your flesh. Amen. You have to subdue it. All of its passions. And, and, and its affections. The, all the emotions. All the influence that it has on you. Those things have been crucified. All of its longings. That, you know, lust means a longing. Especially for something that's forbidden. So, so we could say this, that true Christians have extinguished their human nature with its frailties and passions, its emotions, influences, and longings for what is forbidden. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's if you belong to Christ. That's right. See, the trick is this. It's not that you can do that. We already know you can't do that. That's why born-again believers backslide sometimes. Because you cannot get rid you can't do it, or you haven't done it yet. But if you're Christ's, if you belong to him, him possessing you is what produces this in you. Well, I thought I belonged to Christ. Well, maybe you should, you should, you should see if you really, if he really possesses you. Come on. Amen. I mean, have you ever had a little pet, like a little dog, a little cat? We had, we had several cats. <laughs> several cats. And they all... Something would happen to them. One of them would always get out and run, run across the street and all that kind of stuff. And one night I was on call at this job I was on. I, I got paged somewhere. And I saw that old cat, I don't know which one it was, Smish or some whatever the name was. And, 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 uh, and, and the cat I saw, she was running across the street. I'm thinking, look at this crazy cat. When I came back, that cat was dead in the street. And I went into shock. I pulled in the driveway, parked, got up the next morning, went to work, <laughs> everything. Camille called me up at work. She said, honey, Smish is dead. I said, oh, no. I saw a twite rolled right by. <laughs> Jimmy's not allowed to laugh. No, I, I saw it twice. 
But but here's the point. See, if, I, if that cat, if I really possessed it, that's right. right. That cat was really mine. Mm -hmm. You you wouldn't have been doing that. Amen. We had another that went off, ran off. I saw it one night in the window in the kitchen when this is a different cat raising up, making this noise. I'm thinking, look at this crazy cat. <laughs> <laughs> He's grunting and hissing at his own reflection. <laughs> and then when I looked a little closer, I said, that's not his reflection. That's a possum or something sitting outside of the window on the other side. Uh, one day, she goes out there, comes back five days later, a big rip in her stomach, oh, where you know God didn't fought one of the possums or raccoons or something. Mm -hmm. And the problem was, I didn't possess you. See, that's how you are in Christ. You get out there and get yourself ripped apart, Come on. hurt. Because if you really possessed you, yes. all of these lusts, all of this flesh, all of these longings, all those things Our would God. be dead. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Yeah. yes, Lord. They'd be dead. Yes. And we're talking about having an ultimate gift. That's right. Lord, what it would be like to not have to worry about if I'm going to sin because my flesh is crying out and I can't stop it. I can't do anything. Oh, it's the ultimate gift here, Lord. Yeah, I want to know. I know. I'm going to repent. If I do something wrong, I'm going to confess it to you, Lord. You're going to be faithful and just and forgive me of all unrighteousness and cleanse me and all that kind of stuff and, you know, whatever. But what would it be like? To not have to go through that torment. Amen. Hoping I don't get caught. Even then, feeling so bad, oh God, I don't want to hurt you. Oh Lord. And going through the thing of starting all over. Amen. Feeling unworthy, even Come though on. you're not unworthy. I mean, once you've forgiven, you bang, you're right back where you were in God. That's right. But because you have tendencies toward the flesh, yes. you, you don't really go with the scripture that well anyway. Yeah. Hello. Oh, my God. <laughs> Ephesians 5. Come on, let's go to another. This is another blessing for you. This is the ultimate gift. I, I want this on earth right now. I want to be blessed. I don't want you, I don't just want money. That's right. Come on. That's right. Come on. I could be wealthy and stupid. <laughs> you see a lot of that now during the campaign. Now. That's right. 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 <laughs> wealth and ignorance right together. What a union. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25 through 27 says, Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the word, of water rather, of water by the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle yes. or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. This is the Bible starts telling you. This for, for us today. He's talking about the church that he's presenting. If you're part of the church, if you're born again, you're part of the church. And he's saying he's going to present you to himself having no spots. In other words, you won't have any defects or any disgrace. No defects. No disgrace. Oh, God, you know, I'm living right. But this is one thing. God's still dealing with me on that. That's over. Amen. Amen. We're not dealing with anything Amen. now. That's right. Hello. Right. Hello. 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 We, we're done with dealing with, with dealing with stuff. We dealt with it already. Amen. On the cross. Right. He says, I'm going to present this church to myself, not having a spot or wrinkle. In other words, I'm going to not have any blemishes. Without blemish. No such thing. He'll be unblemished, without blame, and blameless. <laughs> you, you know how awesome that is to be blameless? Some of you understand that at work, uh, you know, like at work sometimes, you know, the boss might come in and they give him a group reprimand. 
Are they calling people in one by one? I, I don't really know. It, it, it doesn't matter. But, the, but you know, like, it, look, closest uh, 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 Sister Trace and I, Minister Pierce and I, you know, she's our boss at work. And old girl said, well, we're gonna, I'm gonna, you know, get with, get with the managers and have a little talk, discuss, you know, how you're doing and stuff. You know, the first thing happened, like, Cause <laughs> y'all want no sister Tracy. She ain't in her ministry like I'm doing mine. You understand? If you're wrong, brother, let me tell you. Here's what you should have done. You know, you get that little. <laughs> no, I'm for real. You preaching now? No, I, 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 I'm sharing with you because you might be blamed for something. Come on. You might have a little spot or a wrinkle yeah. somewhere. That's right. And you know how people in general, and Christians especially, do not like to be wrong. That's right. That's right. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Or, more specifically, you don't want anybody pointing out where you're wrong. That's right. <laughs> Apparently, you don't mind being wrong because you're doing some things that you know are wrong. <laughs> the issue is, don't point it out to me. <laughs> God's dealing with me on that. We're talking about not having to deal with anything anymore. We're talking about the ultimate gift. We're talking about getting to a place in Christ where he's presenting you without any spots. Yes. Without any disgrace or defects. Nothing that you can be blamed for. You unblemished. Yes. This is how Christ loves the church. As we tell husbands, love your wives like Christ loves the church. When he did this, washed you with the word and all that stuff. Yes. But, 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 but this is something powerful. Yes, See, see he's, he's presenting you some, He's presenting you like this yeah. Now remember This is a promise to you That you can have the ultimate gift Salvation secure In the perfect will of God yeah. and, and just so you know I want you to If you could just click on your spiritual antenna right now And get to a point where you believe That that can happen Where you can take out all those old cliches. Well, you know, everybody's going to sin a little bit. Don't no, get rid of that. Well, you know, even if I'm wrong, you know, once saved, always saved. Get rid of all that foolishness. And, and, and understand that what God is doing is bringing you to a point where he can present you in his sight like this. That's the ultimate gift. Imagine how you would feel. My God. I told you once before, might have been last week, where, you know, God was teaching me things. I would do something crazy, something wrong, and stuff like that. And after a while, I had an issue with it. I said to God, okay, God, I appreciate the lessons, but why do I have to offend you to learn? Why must I always offend you? You know, it wasn't enough that you went to the cross. Uh, uh, look at uh, Colossians 1, 21 through 23. Colossians 1, 21 through 23 says, And you that were sometimes alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now have he reconciled in the body of his flesh through death. <laughs> that's, whoa, whoa. That, that's, that's, that's awesome already. And he says, this is why he did that. To present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. Amen. If you continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel, which you have heard and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, where I, Paul, am a minister. But here's what here's the Bible says. The Bible says that, that, that you were alienated. Uh, uh, you were enemies in your mind by wicked works, all your wicked works that, that made you an enemy and, and now he has reconciled you in the body of this flesh through death that's what he did, he came and got you brought you from your alienated state brought you from your place where you were an enemy of his in your mind with all the wicked works uh, in your mind and that you actually did 
He, he brought you. And then he reconciled you through death. But this was the cause for him. He just wanted to present you holy. He wanted to present you as holy. And unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. There's nothing you can reprove me of. There's nothing you can say. I'm wrong. That'd be boy, you'd be so blessed. Because you don't want nobody pointing out your faults or telling you where you were wrong. It, God wanna present you where there's nothing you can ain't wrong. You you have no issue. Wow. You don't know, there's no problem. Oh God, keep me, Lord. I pray, Jesus. Don't let me do this. Don't let me do this. Don't worry. You, you're good. You're good. You are unreprovable. Unblameable. You're holy. Thank you, Lord. Here again, you're being presented as unblameable, sacred, pure, blameless, and consecrated. You're everything that God talks about. You're everything that people talk about is spiritual perfection, reaching that point. God, he's trying to present you like that. That's not some unattainable thing. He said, this is what I died for. Hallelujah. I'm going to present you like this, holy, unblameable, consecrated. I'm going to take you to a point where you won't have any spot, not a wrinkle, not a blemish. I'm going to bring you to a place where you've crucified your flesh, all of its affection and lust. I'm going to make you the righteousness of the law be fulfilled in you. In other words, what my perfect will is, you have fulfilled it. That's what I'm bringing you. And that's my promise to you. That's what I'm doing for you. That's what I'm trying to, that's what I died for. There is a comfort and a peace in this. Feeling secure in and knowing that you're in God's will and that there's nothing that can defeat you. Nothing can defeat you. If you let me remind you, Romans 8.31 says that if God be for us, who can be against us? Uh -uh. It, it says, later on it says, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. More than conquerors. You're not just a conqueror. You're more than conqueror. That's right. Praise the Lord. Now, here's, here's, the, here's the key. Here's the key. Here's how, here's how we can get into that situation. Because we already know. God's already explained to you. That, no, that's what I'm doing. That's what I died for. That's what my, my plan is. That's my goal. I want to present you like this. I want you, if you're walking after the spirit, not after the flesh, then, then I want you, you you're, you're fulfilling all the righteousness of the law, all the things that I'm about, all my will. You're doing that, and I'm trying to present you that way. Amen. But the key, there's some keys to it. If you will, turn me to John chapter 5 and verse 30. John 5 and 30. I can of my own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just. Why is my judgment just? Because I seek not my own will, but the will of the Father which has sent me. 1 Corinthians 4 and 16. 1 Corinthians 4 and 16. But I will come to you shortly, if the Lord will, and will know, not the speech of them which was puffed up, but the power. 1 Corinthians 16 and 7. For I will not see you now, by the way, but I trust to tarry a while with you, if the Lord permit. See, all these passages of scripture, Say, if, if God wills, if the Lord permit, if he wills, not my will, not of my own. In other words, in order to get to this state of arriving at the ultimate gift, you must be in submission to God. Amen. If you remember, Jesus is presenting you in this condition. And you have to let him. You have to let go and let God have his perfect will with you. 
Just let him mold you, shape you, do what you do. He speaks you, do that. When he moves you, do that. What he's trying to do is get you to a place of complete righteousness and holiness. See, but you have to let it go. You have to let him present you in that way. You know, we do the same thing with our children. This is what I want you to do. I want you to do this, do this, do this. Now, when you go to school, I want you to sit in the class and I want you to say anything. Me and my dad used to do this, you know, like we would always get in, in, in grade school. We had a, 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 our, our report card system was like this. You got E, G, S, and U. Excellent, good, satisfactory, or unsatisfactory. So, you know, I was, you know, blessed to be kind of a bright kid. So I would get all E's, maybe one or two G's in all the academic classes. In conduct, I had a U. Every time. And that U overrode all of my E's and G's. Because the hall closet go run across that wall and he'd reach up to the top and get the extension card and you know, wear it out. And his reasoning was you could be stupid and get an E in conduct. You could be dumb and sit there and not act a fool. That was his reason. In other words, I wasn't being presented the way he wanted me to. See, you, you're not submitting to my, my rules, my guidelines. You're not in submission to me. Otherwise, you just sit there in the class. Even if you didn't do your academic work right, you wouldn't get a you in conduct. No, you're embarrassing me. I'm trying to present you in a particular way, and you're not abiding by it. The problem is, is you won't submit. You won't submit to my instructions. You won't submit to my will. You already know what my will is. You understand what I want from you. But yet, if someone says one little thing, and you with your witty, smart self, if there's a way you can make it funny, you're going to. If there's a way you can make the whole class laugh and disrupt everything so that people can like you, you're going to. Some of us are the same way with our Heavenly Father. You know what His will is. You know what He wants. In fact, He's got His Spirit in you to direct you, to lead you, to guide you to teach you, to speak to you. But you won't submit to it. You won't submit. Some, some, you won't even submit to them and receive his spirit. You sit back on the side, you look, and you say, oh yeah, God, wow, that's powerful. And you feel the power of God, and I know that God is drawing you and pulling you, or else you wouldn't be here. And no man comes unto the Father except by me. All those things are facts. But you won't submit. You won't submit. And even those that have it, it's in you, pulling you, nudging you, driving you. You won't submit. Well, you submit to some degree. You're just going to do everything. <laughs> You're just going to do everything. You know, if I say, come here, Smish. And I'll put a little... Cat food there for you come running. I promise you get the promise of something that you want. You come running. Come on, come on. But when feeding time is over, you're dashing in and out the yard in the street back there playing with the raccoons. And <laughs> see, 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 the key to this is submission. You have to submit to God. And in order to submit to anyone, you have to trust them. 
You have to trust that they know what they're talking about and know nothing's going to happen to me if I do this. And that's, the, that's, that's what God's trying to get saints to understand. Yeah. Why don't you trust me if you let me do it? If you just give yourself over, if you just submit it to me, I will make it happen. Yes, Lord. And I know more Christians than not who go all the way with God except for there's one or two little things where this is what I want. I believe I can handle it. And they work hard. Their efforts are put into it. And they work it. And they have some success because they're gifted. But to really get the ultimate gift, to have that ultimate thing, or you don't have it. You're only submitting to this degree. You're only submitting to this degree. Look at 2 Corinthians 1, 21 through 22. I gotta hurry now. I only have passionate talk. 2 Corinthians 1, 21, 22. It said, Now he which establishes us with you in Christ and hath anointed us is God. Who have also sealed us and given the earnest of the Spirit in our hearts. I love this. I love this. Turn to 2 Corinthians 5 or go down to chapter 5 verses 4 through 5. 5 <laughs> For we that are in this tabernacle do groan being burdened, not for that which would be unclothed, but clothed upon that mortality might be swallowed up of life. Now he that wrought us for the selfsame thing as God, who also had given unto us the earnest of the Spirit. Are you still with me? Ephesians 1, 13 and 14. In whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, after that you believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. Praise the Lord. Now here's why I read those scriptures to you, because all of them talk about getting the earnest of the Spirit. The earnest of the Spirit. And earnest is, uh, uh, the Greek word that's translated earnest here is a word that means a pledge. It's a, it's a part of the purchase money or property given in advance as security for the rest. In other words, uh, 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 he, he says this. What, what that's talking about is I'm giving you a part of something. I'm, I'm going to pay you for something, but I'm giving you this part as security that I'm going to pay you the rest. I'm giving you this in advance. In, in other words, you don't have the whole thing. That means that you have received the Spirit, and that when you receive the Spirit, you also receive the pledge to give you heaven yes. and eternal life yes. with the Lord and His glory. Amen. Because the Holy Spirit is just an earnest. It's just a, a, a part of the purchase money. It's a part of the property. Come on. It's just given in advance as security. Yes. So you will believe. So you understand that I'm going to give you the rest. That's right. If I don't intend on paying you, if I'm not telling you the truth, I ain't giving you nothing. Come on. That's right. But I'm giving you some upfront money. Thank you, Lord. Come on. I'm giving you, you know, sometimes when you're buying a service or having someone build something for you, they will require earnest money. Yeah. A portion of the full payment. Right. They want that, you know, well, yeah, I'll do that, but you, you have to give me, you know, this much mm -hmm. up front. Mm -hmm. you, you have to do this. You have to, uh, uh, it's just a portion of the full payment. That's the earnest money. Mm -hmm. That's the earnest money. Mm -hmm. or, or when you want someone to do something for a certain fee, you might say, if you will do whatever, I'll pay you $1,000. Mm -hmm. I'll give you 500 now and the rest when you're finished. Yes. That's the earnest. Amen. See, that's what God has given you when he gave you the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. He gave you the earnest. 
In other words, if you look up Ernest in your dictionary, it's going to say serious or sincere. God wants you I'm serious about this. I'm being very sincere with you. And just to show you that, I'm going to give you a taste of glory. I'm going to give you, the, I'm making a pledge. I'm giving you a part of it now. See, because this, this is the ultimate gift. I'm giving you this now so that you can live in it, walk in it, yes. and be in it right now. Amen. You, you, you want to go to heaven? Let me give you a taste of it. Let me give you a piece of it. Here's the problem, that when you get it, you don't recognize it as a part of heaven. You don't recognize it as the earnest of the glory of God. Otherwise, you'd be dancing in it. Ooh, yes. Come on. Look, I gave a man some earnest money one time. He spent the earnest money before he ever finished the job. Hello. I know that's funny. But you ought to be spending this earnest that God has given you. Hey, come on. Come on. You ought to be living in it, loving it. Oh, my God. I'm, look, I just told a guy on Friday, man, look, you, you're working too hard at this. You ought to just be enjoying the presence and the spirit of God in your life. Enjoy salvation. You don't have to work through it. I, you know, if you, if you just want to witness to somebody, God will give you somebody to witness to. If you just want to minister to somebody, he give you somebody to minister to. Right. Come here, I just came from Panama. Every day we ministered. That's right. Every day. Yes. Taught beautiful, wonderful lessons. Mm -hmm. yeah. Brother, let me share with you. We, we just yeah. talked last night about this. And the test came the next day. And you really applied the things that we taught you. Now you have to go do this. And we did that, and next thing you know, we're all happy and having fun again. And everything that God teaches, a test will follow. And if you just walk in it, Lord, I'm, I'm doing this. No, I'm, 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 I'm enjoying salvation right now. Because it's part of it. It's the earnest yes, Jesus. of the possession. Yes. What he's going to get, what you're going to get. Hallelujah. Now this, oh, my goodness, God, I'm going to be different now, Lord. I'm gonna, when I get in my car, I'm going to go crazy and join salvation. Look, 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 I was sitting up here the day, and I was just singing. Just going on and singing on my computer and everything, just singing away. And Minister Yates turned around and said, Oh, you and your helping <laughs> like, What you singing? It ain't what we singing, but you going with it, ain't you? <laughs> yes. I'm enjoying my earnest money. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> oh, this, is, this is it. I'm walking in it. Glory to God. Look at what else God tells you. Philippians chapter 4, verse 19 says, But my God shall apply all of your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. The problem is, is that many Christians don't believe that. You heard that so often that it's become like a cliche to you. And you just, oh yeah, well, and my God will supply all your need by his riches and glory. And by his riches and glory. Not yours. Hallelujah. <laughs> but it became cliche to you because you don't really believe that. All right. Otherwise, you wouldn't get frantic and start trying to figure out what am I going to do now? Well, uh oh, I need this. I got. I have this. I, I don't know how I'm going to start sweating. And now your life is, is is moved by all of your actions for a certain period of time are moved by the desire or by the uh, a thought that you have to come up with the uh, your needs. Right. 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 I have to somehow figure out how to come up with my need. I told, I told some people one time, uh, a, a group of pastors and teachers, you know, we get together drinking coffee and stuff, and, and I shared this with them one time because the conversation got like this, you know, with people at the doctors, they talk about, you know, yeah, I was cutting somebody or whatever, but we were talking about preparing messages. And, and the subject came up, well, yeah, man, you ever been in that situation where man, you just can't think of anything? And you're doing this and you're doing that, and you say, oh, God, if you would do this. I said, here's the, here's the problem. You think it's your responsibility to come up with a message. Mm -hmm. 
And I said, that's God's people. And if he called you to be a pastor, then he needs to come up with the message. That's right. I'm sitting here. You tell me what to say. I ain't coming up with nothing. That's your folks. I don't have no, I'm not sweating at all. You know, you know, you know, God reminded me of that yesterday. So I was sitting down, you know, in my little spot, sitting on a little patio in the summer, you know, I got, and plus, I don't have anywhere to sit now. Everything is uh, destroyed. So, so I'm sitting out there, and I'm thinking, okay, what is it, what is it, what is it? And here's the crazy part about it. Immediately, I knew what I was going to teach the kids at ROP at Duda Hall. And, and when I got there this morning, they locked up. I, I couldn't I couldn't, I couldn't get in. But when it came to this, that's right. Amen. Come on, man. Okay, Lord. Yes. <laughs> what? And God reminded me, what you sweating for? Come on. Remember? <laughs> I said, yeah, you know what? You're right. I ain't sweating. You come up with it. That's right. You tell me, I'm right here with my Bible, with my computer. You just tell me. And I'll go there. But God says, I'm going to supply all of your need according to my riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So whatever it is that you need, I'm going to supply it. You know what? Because you're blessed. You're mine. You belong to me. That's right. Come on. And if you just believe it, if you just believe it, no, I'm doing this. You know why? Because you in line for the ultimate gift, not just in, oh, I can't wait till I go to heaven. Oh, on the other side. No, no, right here. That's right. That's right. On this side. Glory. Jesus said this. Jesus told the people this. He said, uh, uh, before ever the Holy Ghost was given, he said this. Uh, the, 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 uh, the devil, the enemy, comes to kill, destroy, steal. He said, but I came that you might have life. And said what? And that more abundantly. And, and wait, this is the good part. That you will have it more abundantly. That's right. Amen. I ain't came here for you to have, look, oh God, we need dinner. How many of y'all? Four? Your four plates of dinner. Okay. That ain't God. That's right. Come on. That's right. That ain't God. Because abundantly means excess. That's right. That's it. It means excess. And just so you understand how God does that kind of crazy stuff. First of all, I'm going to feed 5,000 people with two loaves and three fishes. Yeah. Or three loaves, three, whatever it is. Yeah. I'm going to feed that many people. And after I've done something that miraculous, let me show you how excess works. Go get them baskets. You got 12 more baskets. That's right. Everybody eat. We still got some. No, I think God can count. I feed 5,000 people and they all be filled. Yeah. Right? But you got excess. That's right. Amen. Come on. Yeah. Oh, I don't want to be greedy. I don't want to be like that. Well, we we ain't asking you to be like anything. We're just asking you to submit to God. Yeah. If you submit to God, He's doing it. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. He's doing it. Praise your name, Lord. You know, if you, if you say, and Pastor Mike, you understand, I, I helped you fix your flat tire, and, and you said you were going to give me $10. And if I gave you $20, you are not going to give me $10 back. You might try. And I said, no, no, that's for you. You're not going to insist. No, no, go ahead, keep that extra 10 Keep it. And, and for me, okay, thank you. That's what God is doing with you. He, he's, he's trying to give you excess. Now you, 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 now you gotta submit to him. You gotta trust him. You gotta allow him to work this out in you because this is his world. This is the kingdom that he brought you into. He's trying to give you the ultimate gift. Not just when you get to heaven, but he wants you to have it now too. Yes, heaven. Beyond what you could ever imagine. But so is this life if you let it happen. You only submitted somewhat. And you already are beyond what you could have imagined. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, come on. 
Come on, Pastor. Glory to God. Look at 2 Corinthians 9 and 8. Come on, this is it. We are. 2 Corinthians 9 and 8. <laughs> and God is able to make all grace abound towards you. That ye always, having all sufficiency in all things, may abound in every good work. Amen. Now, the word abound means to superabound, to be in excess. Amen. To cause to be superabound or excel. So, so he's talking about this. So God is able to, uh, 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 to make all grace, all the favor, all the graciousness, all the whatever grace, everything that grace means, he's able to make that abound towards you. I'm going to make favor abound towards you. I'm going to make it come in excess. Superabound in quality and quantity. And then he says that ye always having all sufficiency. Uh, sufficient, you having all self-satisfaction, contentedness, and competence. Yes, yes. I'm going to make it where all this stuff is happening to you. You're going to superabound in all these things, in favor, in satisfaction, in contentedness. You're going to be so content and you'll be competent. You won't be walking around here half stupid. Worried. See? There, and, and, and just so you get it, there are so many passages of the Bible or scriptures that promise you prosperity. I'm convinced that if you're not prospering, there's something wrong with you. Come on, Come on say that again. Oh, that's good. Or I'll put it this way, like this. You're as prosperous as you can be and still be righteous. I don't know about you, but I already know this. God has explained to me, shown me, you have a limit. That's right. Tell me, you got limits. That's right. I thank God that my limit is a little bit fuller than some of yours. <laughs> no, you, God would give you everything, everything he promised is yours, except that God's not going to give you anything that's going to cause you to fall. Oh, my God. Come on. That's it. you want. Because you really want to be saved. You really want to live for God. That's right. And if God gave you that, uh, uh, some of you, it ain't got to be put $100,000. ain't got to be no million. Come on, come on. He gave you $100,000, you'd be gone. <laughs> Pride would take you out. Jesus. Look, it, it gets even this defined with God. I'll share with you. It's like this. Sometimes God will give you a situation where you're earning money and you 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 you, you don't you, you if you use that money to get the things you wanted you would be proud uh -oh. Uh -oh. so now you don't have that money okay i'm giving you the money yes 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 it's coming from me hallelujah come on now you appreciate it come on now you feel tight about who thank yes. jesus thank you god Oh Lord, uh -huh. what a blessing! Come on. But if you had used your your what you call your own money, that's right. Come on, Pastor. That's right. Tight. But you would tell everybody, oh God, did this God do this? <laughs> See, I'm telling you, you are as prosperous as you can stand to be yes. and still be righteous. The key is submit to God, yes. get more righteous, yes. get more blessings. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Yes. That's it. He'll pour it on you. Come on! You couldn't stand it. That's right. That's right. That's true. He will pour it on you. Yes, he will. Praise the Lord. But 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 most people, you you just as prosperous as you can stand to be and still be righteous. Uh, you're really in control of how prosperous you are. You know why? You know why? Because the Bible just said we just read it. God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that ye always having all sufficiency in all things may abound in every good work. Amen. Amen. See, if you took that abound in every good work out, you'd be in trouble. That's right. Because that's where most of us are. Come on, 
But when you put that every good work in there, oh, every good work, that means I got to be really righteous. I got to be humble. I got to be all the things that God said. I got to be submitted to Jesus. See, we, we want to abound. We want all favor, all grace to abound toward us. We want to have all sufficiency in all things. But you got to abound in every good work. That's it. So yes, I, I believe that we are in control of how prosperous we are Amen. by the level of righteousness we acquire yes. by submitting to yes. Jesus. Yes. Yes. God, I'm yours. Yes. Do what you will. Yes. You can have the ultimate gift today. You can have the ultimate gift today. Hallelujah. Receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Or submit to Jesus and let him present you blameless now yes, and in eternity. Yes. Let him submit you blameless. Hallelujah. Let, let, let him get God present me like you want to. Without yes, spot, Jesus. without wrinkle, without blemish. I want you to be, I want the righteousness of the Lord to be fulfilled in you. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I want all the lust and, and, and affections of your flesh that you crucified. Yes, yes, yes. No, you can, it's the ultimate gift. I want you to be blameless, Hallelujah. holy, consecrated. Glory. That's how I'm trying to present you. If you just submit to me, if you just let yourself go with me, I'll, I'll do it. Hallelujah. I'll do it. And there's not one thing, one need you'll ever have that I won't supply according to my riches and glory. Praise Not you, one. Lord. God doesn't lie. He doesn't lie. I'm able to make all grace abound to you. Hallelujah. And all sufficiency. Mm -hmm. In all things. Yes. See, the problem is me. Come on. I'm hindering you, God. You're trying to bless me. Come on. You, 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 you're trying to prosper me. All right. I'm in the way. I'm in the way. I'm in the way. I'm in the way. Somebody today, will you let God get through? Will you let God present you? Will you let God do what he wants to do with you? Will you let him fulfill the righteousness of the law with you? Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, O oh God, for who you are. And we thank you, O oh God, that it's your desire to take control of us and make us and mold us and, and shape us into what you desire. Hallelujah. And Lord, you 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 point out to us another reason why you want to do this today. You want to do this so that you can you can bless us, so that you can make us uh, uh, live this life, oh God, so that we can enjoy the ultimate gift, not just heaven to come, not just in eternity, but even right now, God. Even right now, you want us to have the, the comfort, the peace, the security of knowing that we're in the perfect will of God, that we're blameless, spotless, without wrinkle, that we're holy, righteous, and consecrated. And Lord, that we can enjoy the pleasure of the prosperity that you promised. Yes, Jesus. And that every need, all of our needs, will be met. Yes, Jesus. With excess. Hallelujah. With excess. A life more abundant, Lord. Yes. Bless your wonderful name, Lord. Lord, I believe that there are people here today who desire just what it is that you want to give. Lord, I believe that there are people who, if they will say, Lord, I, I want it, if they will call you to your word, if they, will, if they will make you stand on your word, God, that you will perform for them right now. That you will do the thing that they desire right now, Lord. What it is that they want. Your word says, God, if, if we ask anything according to your will, that you hear us. And Lord, if you hear us, we know that we'll have those petitions. 
That's another promise, God. All you have to do is hear us. And you'll answer. Somebody wants it. Come on. Somebody wants it. Somebody will say, Lord, I realize, I realize. Thank you for speaking to my heart, Lord. I realize that I've only submitted to a certain degree. I, I, I realize, Lord, that there's more. I can give more. There's more of myself I can submit to you. There's one thing. There's two things I'm holding on to. There's things that I'm trying to do for myself, Lord, when I should just let it go and let you do it all. If I could just crucify my flesh, I know I could get there, Lord. I would let go. Oh, no. I'm not doing drugs. I'm not fornicating. I'm not stealing. I'm not lying. But I'm just holding on. I, 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 I can't get to that spiritual state, Lord, where I get the ultimate gift. I, I recognize I'm just not there yet, Lord. Lord, to your name. Will you help me today, Jesus? Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yeah, I, I want to come to you, Lord. I want to submit to you right now. Yeah. Can anybody Hallelujah. deny their flesh? Can anybody Hallelujah. abandon their old man long enough to get touched by God? Hallelujah. 